What's going on, people? Nightface here, ready to bring you my horror movie slash Blu-ray collection. Uh, I got a few titles here to share with you guys. We're in the month of October. All scary goodness. And, um, yeah, some of these uh, titles that I picked out, some of them are just suspense thrillers, but they have some horror movie elements, so I decided to categorize them here. And I'll go over, you know, some of the titles that I share with you guys. But yeah, let's just get right into it. First one up, we got 30 Days of Night. Very underrated, um, I was going to say horror, duh. <laughs> vampire film. I really enjoyed this one. Uh, the sequel sucked ass, but <laughs> this one in particular is one of the most underrated and best vampire films I've ever seen. We got Josh Hartnett in this, and it's, it's just an interesting premise that Basically, they're in Alaska, and it's dark there for 30 days, and it's just nighttime. The perfect harvesting ground for any vampires. It's like a vampire Disneyland, pretty much, in this freaking movie. Uh, really enjoyed it. Directed by David Slade, who's a phenomenal director. Uh, yeah, 30 Days of Night. Great vampire film. If you haven't seen it, check it out. Next one up, Anaconda. <laughs> this movie... Just cheesy, and uh, I contemplated many times getting rid of this Blu-ray. I mean, you got J-Lo, you got Ice Cube, and John Boyd. Uh, but still, <laughs> I remember seeing this when growing up. It was just a giant anaconda, you know, eating people. And There's still that funny shot of uh, John Boyd's character being, uh, I'm going to try to say this word, regurgitated by the anaconda. Like, he spit him back out. He does that weird wink at j -Lo, like, yeah, <laughs> gets me every time. But yeah, Anaconda, classic. Um, the Descent, Whew. this movie is one of the scariest movies I've ever seen. Very claustrophobic. Like, if you have any claustrophobia with, like, tunnels or tight spaces, this movie is a nightmare for you. Seriously. Oh, my God. I mean... You watch this movie, like, I think it's like an hour in, you know, these monsters don't show up in the cave, but still, just the suspense, the atmosphere of these uh, cave-dwelling uh, uh, chicks, they just go in there, and they're going through all these tight little corners, tight tunnels, just giving you some claustrophobia, man, I'm telling you, this movie is outstanding, it still remains one of the best horror movies out there so you have to watch this one this is a must watch uh, neil marshall directed this who directed some game of thrones episodes so kudos to him yeah the descent amazing all right this one's a classic it's david cronenberg's the fly and i believe this is the a remake uh same thing like the thing where it was a remake from the 80s that a lot of people just thought was wholly original because we get directors like david cronenberg or John Carpenter, what he did for the thing, they add their own spin on this, and this movie is just disgusting. <laughs> but at the same time, it is one of the most beautifully, like, terrifying, most gruesome films I've ever seen. And Jeff Goldblum gives his best performance. If you want to see the best Jeff Goldblum performance, besides Independence Day, where everybody knows it from, The Fly, right here. It's, oh man. You got a nice, um, what are they called? Like a J card kind of. I have a few of those in some of my Blu rays, like, came with it. Cool custom J card. Yeah, so it's just one man's teleporta teleportation machine gone horribly wrong, and his DNA merges with a fly. And yes. <laughs> the fingernail sequence. Ugh, gets me. Anyway, this film right here is on my top five. Top five. Maybe top three, you know. Um, it's the best, most underrated horror movie. And as Frailty, with um, the late great Bill Paxton, rest in peace, and Matthew McConaughey, I'm not even going to ruin what happens in this film. It's just an interesting take on a man's beliefs and religion and how it could get so corrupt and morally twisted in somebody's mind i mean that's all i'm gonna say about this holy shit the twist everything about this film is pure horror 
pure horror masterpiece. And the, this one right here. And this was Bill Paxton's first film that he directed. Holy crap, who knew Bill Paxton had this darkness in him to direct such an amazing film? Frailty, one of the best, in my opinion. All right. Another underrated, uh, this one is sci-fi horror, is Event Horizon. If anybody's played that video game, Dead Space, think of it as that. Like, Dead Space. It's like, basically, it's hell meets space. Literally, in this film. Um, and this is directed by Paul W.S. Anderson, who's infamous for directing those god-awful, you know, Resident Evil movies that, you know, everybody, some people like, some people don't like. I do own some of them, but this is his best film, I think, in my opinion. Uh, he also directed Mortal Kombat, but yeah. Lawrence Fishburne, you got uh, Sam Neill or Nell from Jurassic Park. Whew. If you haven't seen this, oh my god, this movie gets under your skin. Just they have so such disturbing, dark, like satanic images. It's just like it stays with you. That's why um, I don't. I try not to rewatch this one too much because <laughs> that's the thing that freaks me out. Like satanic, demonic kind of shit freaks me out. It's just something about him seems like it could happen to you. And this one's set in space, so it's just like I would say it's over the top, but in a good way where it just goes all out, like falls out. Just non-stop madness in space. And it's just, just watch it. Great. All right. The Purge, the first one. Um, I own the other two in digital copy. I might pick them up later on. But I love Anarchy. is my favorite one. This one, it was a mixed bag. I had to rewatch this a few times before I truly appreciated. I like the concept. Just the execution was a little weak because we didn't get the concept, the full grasp of this concept where for 24 hours, you know, or 12 hours, however long, um, there's no law. Anything goes and people can dress up, mask and kill people, machetes and chainsaws and guns out on the street and you wouldn't be arrested for it. That was such an interesting concept that didn't execute this properly in the first one. In the second one, Anarchy with the great Frank Grillo is where they really nailed this franchise. So I got to get Anarchy, but yeah, this one with Ethan Hawke was... Um, Still interesting to watch, so yeah. Purge. Uh, Jennifer's Body, right here with uh, the lovely Megan Fox. You know, Transformers at Candy Babe. <laughs> uh, what can be said about this? Not as memorable, but some of the sequences with uh, Megan Fox, you know, when she has like that it, like teeth kind of um, effect. <laughs> it was pretty good. Uh, I might need to rewatch this one. But, uh, yeah, Megan Fox, I'm telling you, she's just so over-sexualized. This is ridiculous. But I'm not complaining. Anyway, uh, <laughs> moving on, we got Joyride with uh, Paul Walker, rest in peace. God, a lot of uh, great late actors. This one was really good. This one was surprised me. Because you would think watching this would suck, but no, they actually executed this pretty good. And I think it had to do with the performance from uh, Paul Walker and Steve Zahn. And this chick right here, the, uh, all three lead performances were great. It's about them pr playing a uh, prank on a trucker. And, I mean, this guy is not laughing. I mean, he, he just goes after their ass. <laughs> it was crazy. So really enjoy that one. Uh, Sleepy Hollow. Uh, great Tim Burton gothic horror film with, uh, I was going to say Sean Penn. I don't know why. But with Johnny Depp and Christina Ricci, uh, yeah, this uh, the Headless Horseman was very memorable. Uh, yeah, I, just, I really enjoyed this one. Might need to rewatch it. It has some scary ass visuals in this one. I remember, uh, so I need to rewatch that one soon. Uh, very underrated. Probably never even heard of this film. If you've seen this movie, I give you props because you're missing out on one of the best underrated horror films, monster films, and that's Splinter. Watch Splinter, people. Oh, my God. This film is amazing. You like uh, monster films, like creature, you know, horror, then this one right here. It's just such a fascinating original concept where and it all takes place in a gas station of all places. It's like very grounded, and it's just with four characters, two criminals, and, and then a the couple. 
and they're stranded at this gas station and they're stuck there because there's this weird like porcupine-ish regenerating uh thing creature that's outside if it touches you it just it's it's weird it's but it's crazy good splinter yeah i really enjoy this one all right um keep saying underrated i'm gonna keep saying underrated <laughs> another underrated one the strangers oh man this one really got to me when i first saw it because just that fucked up ending and then also just that concept and i it'd be awesome to have a strangers too if they really directed the hell out of the sequel they got somebody like mike flanagan uh who's directed like oculus and uh, Gerald's Game, I believe he directed Gerald's Game in Netflix. That's another great horror movie. A lot of Stephen King adaptations coming out this year, which is crazy. But yeah, um, I'm saying, like, if you got that director to direct uh, The Strangers 2, oh my god, it would be so terrifying. It would be amazing. But yeah, this concept of it's so realistic because it can happen to anybody. Just imagine you sitting at home midnight 11 you're nice and cozy and you get people like this just lurking outside just watching you waiting for their chance to strike it's very oh man it just fucks with your head man and uh one of the famous lines in this film is when they asked him why are you doing this and said because you're home i really like this one strangers uh we got the thin remake and yeah, that's all you can say about that. <laughs> I mean, I, I got it because it was dirt cheap. I definitely prefer the original over this. But I got this because it's okay. It's not bad. I really like Mary Elizabeth Winstead. I believe that's her full name. You might know her from The Girl from Scott Pilgrim and 10 Cloverfield Lane. I really like her as an actress, so she held her own in this one. And it's, uh, this is a prequel, actually. This is a prequel to the original thing, which is pretty cool. Um horror remake right here another one is texas chainsaw massacre and i do prefer this one or the original because the original just felt like ugh, like unwatchable not because it was bad because it felt like i would like maybe that's why it's so amazing to this day the original texas chainsaw so effective because when you watch the original is it you're watching some crazy serial killers like own snuff film like its own documentary that's how fucked up and weird that that movie was that it just oh but i could rewatch the shit out of um the remake here which is uh, pretty good has jessica beale in it um leatherface is still scary as hell in this one but yeah moving on moving on we got your next uh this was directed by adam wingard who made the guest and i do have the guest but i have it on dvd that's a fantastic film uh if you haven't seen that one uh, the guest but yeah your next was amazing just like this is like the ultimate family dinner gone wrong horribly wrong you just get uninvited guests it's just so fucked up and <laughs> i like the main lead here the girl surprised the hell out of me she kicked ass in this one so ooh, yeah your next all right, get on to the other stack here. I got two more after this. All right, An American Werewolf in London. Classic, one of the most popular and famous uh, werewolf film adaptations. Gee, it just got bright in here. I felt like I was uh, one step closer to heaven or something. That was weird. Anyway, uh, yeah, American Werewolf in London recently picked this one out of the restored edition. It's directed by Max Landis, or John Landis, I'm sorry. And till this day, that werewolf effect holds up. It's amazing. It's one of the best parts. The transformation sequence, great. Can't wait to rewatch this. I haven't seen it in a long time. Um, one I picked up, the dying to pick up, because it's one of the most surprising films of this year. Surprised the hell out of me. And one of the best. It says it right here, best reviewed movie of 2017. That's Get Out. Um, I had a comedy in here. Like, I like the guy's friend who <laughs> knew all the horror movie cliches and kept trying to warn his friend. Like, well, he kept blowing up his phone and God, it's so funny. 
so many funny lines. He's like, I'm TCA, or TCA, TSA, I'm sorry. I'm TSA, motherfucker. <laughs> really enjoy this one. Uh, it, you know, it wasn't really like a it had horror movie elements, obviously, but it's more enjoyable because of the refreshing story, the direction it takes, and just the comedic performance, you know, performances, actually. Yeah, just a crazy premise, uh, directed by Jordan Peele. Who would have thought this this guy, Jordan Peele from Key and Peele, would be able to create something so amazing like this? So yeah, get out. That's pretty cool. Um, now we're getting into some remakes here. We got the Let Me In, which is the remake of Let the Right One In, which I do own on DVD, but don't have it on Blu-ray yet. So I have this one on. On Blu-ray, that's with Chloe Grace, Chloe Grace Moretz, who is a hit girl. Everybody knows her as hit girl. Uh, yeah, it was. It's the same beat for beat. Uh, nothing uh, like special or different. Same exact story and direction from the original, uh, the foreign film. But I let the wrong one in. And Matt Reeves, who's a fantastic director, he directed this one so. Um, yeah, so, and funny enough, we have another horror remake, and it stars Hit Girl again, Carrie, <laughs> and I've recently picked this one up at Best Buy, it was like $7.99, I mean, look at that in Tokyo, people, I, I, I can't pass this up, look at that, this is an awesome looking creepy lenticular, I like the, the back cover there, um, not as strong as the original, but I still enjoyed it. Could have been way better though. All right, so we got Fright Night here with uh, Colin Farrell and the uh, late Anton Yelchin, rest in peace. God, a lot of a lot of good actors that have passed away in these horror films. Um, yeah, I really enjoy this one. This is just a fun horror vampire film to watch. It's just fun. It's not even terrifying. It's just fun. You will have so much fun watching this one. Seriously, and Colin Farrell gives such a great performance. He really Literally sinks his teeth in this performance, pun intended. Anyway, God, so many remakes. I, I just, I guess I love horror remakes here. I have the best ones here. Uh, the Crazies. No, this is a remake of the original George A. Romero Crazies, but I've never seen that one because it looks pretty dated, to be honest. And um, yeah, I just, I never was intrigued to watch the original, but the, this one was amazing. You got Timothy Oliphant, or uh, how do you say his name? He's from Justified, uh, the actor. I think he's like right there. Yeah, uh, you know, it's just the water supply goes wrong in this town. Everybody just starts losing their fucking mind. I love it. Really damn good. It surprised me. Um, this movie right here. Whew. This is the reason why foreign films are so good, and they they do things that uh, American films. Don't execute execute as well. And I speak highly of this film. And it's Train to Busan. One of the best zombie movies. Most refreshing zombie movies I've seen. Where they focus on the central characters. Make you actually care about them. You know, not some like World War Z bullshit. <laughs> but this movie, if you haven't seen it, it's on Netflix. Watch it on Netflix. Because that's where I wa first watched it. And then I had to buy the Blu-ray. This is a must-own. This Korean zombie Thriller set on a on a train, train to Busan, obviously. Just oh my god, this movie had a lot of heart, and it actually has uh, an antagonist, this piece of shit civilian. Well, you know, but you can relate to everybody. That's the beauty of this film. You can relate to all these characters because it asks you, what would you do in this situation? And there's a lot of uh, realistic characters here. Like you got the father with the daughter who will do anything and risk everything. To save his daughter, his little girl. And you got the man with his wife who's pregnant. Who is very noble. And he would help anybody because that's what his wife expects of him. And then you got like the real scumbag, like selfish people that just, you know, don't give a fuck about nobody. And just save their own skin before anybody else. Train to Busan. If you haven't seen it, please watch it. It's amazing. Um... One of my favorite zombie movies ever. Probably my number one. Is the Dawn of the Dead remake. And who would have thought? Zack Snyder. 
I think this was his first film before 300. I'm not sure. I think it was. But holy crap. This is the epitome of a uh, remake done spectacularly. Like, seriously. Vin Rames, everybody's stuck at a mall. You know the premise. The mall's the best place to be stuck at during the zombie apocalypse because they have never ending supplies. But eventually it ends and then they got to go out on the street. And that shit. That final sequence was just. Man, it had me on edge. So. Dawn of the Dead, amazing. They're having Scream Factory release of that. I think I might have to pick that up because it's that damn good. All right, here we go. The Hills Have Eyes remake, I know. I know. Everybody's probably thinking, oh, God, you only watch horror remakes. You suck. <laughs> um, hey, some of them are good. I, I believe these are good. These are great. Uh, this one in particular, holy crap. I seen the original Wes Craven one, and it doesn't hold up. That guy in the original one, um, man, freaky looking. That guy, phew, give me chills. But this one was just as effective. Got these crazy deformed nuclear, like, survivors that just been living in the desert and just became cannibals. It's freaky. That was a vibe. Another underrated vampire film is Interview with the Vampire. It stars Brad Pitt. And Tom Cruise, holy crap! And a young Kristen Dunst, and I think I'm talking about Nerves in this film too. And wow, this is just an epic tale of time and the lifespan, like of of a vampire, like how it transcends through time periods. Fascinating film, really good. If you haven't seen this movie, it's just a good movie. It's not terrifying. But just the drama aspect of it, like, it's, I love it. And directed by Neil Jordan. Cool. Um, wait a minute. I think The Descent was directed by Neil Jordan as well. Maybe Neil Marshall. I don't know. I gotta look back on that. But anyway, The Shining. My favorite Stanley Kubrick film. My favorite. This, this one right here. I know. Or 2001, A Clockwork Orange. I know those are the best ones. But this is my favorite one right here. Shining with, here's Johnny, here's Jack, crazy Jack. Uh, you know, all work and no play make Jack a dull boy. <laughs> Jack Nichols' performance is what stole the damn show. Oh, man, this movie fucked me up when I was a kid. This is my top five because it has one of the scariest images. And I can't look at the pictures still to this day because it just it messes me up. Like, the, the picture of the twin girls down the hallway... God, one of the creepiest images I've ever seen in film. Oh my God, the atmosphere. Just the, that, oh, was it? The Overlook Hotel itself is like a character. It's insane. Imagine being trapped in a huge hotel like that during a snowstorm in the freaking mountains. You'll go crazy too. And there's that debate. Was this all in his head? Did he just go crazy? Or was that hotel actually haunted? And the way Stanley Kubrick, who's a master at... Creating so much tension and capturing atmosphere and particular shots. Like uh, when the kid's riding his uh, uh, little, uh, whatever, Hot Wheels bicycle, whatever that is, down the hallway. Oh my god, just gives me chills. Shining. It's a shining example of a great horror film, seriously. And I still can't believe um, Stephen King hates that film. Why? <laughs> it's just the best Stephen King adaptation, I think. That's my opinion, anyway. Uh, signs and of course directed by here we go everybody says it like this so I'm gonna say it like it M. Night Shyamalan Ding Dong whatever <laughs> M. Night Shyamalan you know but um, this one was really surprising as well Mel Gibson and Joaquin Phoenix are in the cornfields they start seeing these alien symbols in the cornfields and it's just so creepy you just, just build it up so wonderfully and then that shot of seeing the alien for the first time, like, on the news. Oh, my God. Terrified the hell out of me. Uh, science is great. This one's more suspense, uh, based on a true story kind of film, but I had to include it. Is Zodiac. My God, this film. And just look at that cover. Look, that's like the same handwriting the Zodiac Killer used. Please rush the editor. Oh, man, I love this. I, just, I really do. I like this one. Um, Robert Downey Jr., Jake Gyllenhaal, fantastic performances. Mark Ruffalo is in this. You got Iron Man Hulk in this. 
Uh, and this is just decade upon decade of investigation of the true life Zodiac killings that occurred in San Francisco. Just David Fincher directed this, and he's a he's a master class of suspense. So definitely check that out. Damn, 25 minutes. We gotta speed this up. We got Alien in space. No one can hear you scream. This is more of a horror film and sci-fi horror at its best. Right here. I think this all started with Alien. Jesus, this this film got under my skin, especially with the chest burster scene. Classic um, Sigourney Weaver. Yeah, she's the ultimate um, badass babe. Like seriously. Yeah. All right, and then we got Aliens, and this is more action, I know, but I had to include it. This is the only Alien films I own. I, think, I do own Prometheus, I think. I don't know. Maybe I have trade that one in. I don't know. But Aliens, still fantastic, you know, sequel. Great sequel. One of the best sequels. Um, we got a steelbook here of Crimson Peak. Beautiful, nice, glossy steelbook here. Shiny. You got the spine. You got the... Shot of the whatever that is. What is that? I, mean, I guess it's the castle, the house, wherever they stayed in. Guillermo del Toro directed this, and I was pleasant, pleasantly surprised with this film. Look at that interior artwork, people. Oh my god, I love it. Got uh, Jessica Chastain and uh, Tom Hiddleston. The twist that it took, the, the third act just goes completely bananas. I mean, it goes off the rails like batshit crazy. That's what I really appreciate about Crimson Peak. It builds up towards the, the third act. And it's not necessarily about the ghosts or the spirits. It's more about the story and the mystery that unfolds about the past of this uh, particular house that occurred. Uh, yeah, if you haven't seen it, watch it. Recommend it. Gilmer Tour's masterpiece, Pan's Labyrinth in that beautiful purple Mondo. Oh my god, I just, I, I wanted to get the, um, uh, was it the Criterion of Pan's Labyrinth, but I, I just decided to keep my steelbook, I, I don't like to double dip, so, um, let's just open this up so you guys can see, got the little fairies there in the back, that's pretty cool, just beautiful artwork by Mondo, inside artwork, I love it. Alright, let's keep moving. Took up too much time. I get too in-depth for my films, I know. I Saw the Devil. One of the most suspenseful, craziest, goriest revenge films I have ever seen. Yeah, and I put the plastic on this because it's one of my favorite steelbooks. Uh, yeah. If you have seen this film, it's a great Korean. One of the best Korean films next to Old Boy. And funny enough, it stars the... Um, Chon Min Sik, I think that's his name, from Old Boy fame. Um, yeah, he plays the serial killer, and then um, this guy right here plays um, the guy after him because let's just say he killed somebody he truly cared about. And what's fascinating about this film, he, he finds the killer in 30 minutes, and the rest of the film is how far he goes into torturing the serial killer, and it, it turns into this crazy. Cat and Mouse game, I highly recommend it. It's on, I think it's still on Netflix. Amazing. That's why I love Korean films. They're just amazing. They don't hold back. All right, so we got Jaws here. Classic Steven Spielberg. Everybody was afraid to get in the water for this film. Rightfully so. The, the greatest shark movie ever made. And it still holds up. Just got that pop-up slip cover. It's pretty cool. Classic. Another classic is John Carpenter's The Thing. The only Scream Factory I own is this one. For good reason, because it's one of my favorite sci-fi horror films. Next to Alien, this one right here, John Carpenter. It's just a masterful director. Um, knockout performance by Kurt Russell, the creature designs. Just, oh man, the setting of Antarctica. You can feel the chill, the cold. And just the suspense of not being able to trust anybody. Can't trust nobody in this film. It's crazy. Anybody could be the thing. Even Kurt Russell himself. That's just the genius of how Carpenter shoots this film and the direction it goes. It's oh my God. one of the best. The best. Another classic one is uh, Poltergeist. 
Very scary film. Holy crap. You know how I feel about demonic stuff and there's just the TV and that clown scene under the bed. It's a digibook. Pretty cool digibook here. Got a nice shot of the original poster right there. And um, this is the director, Tove Hooper, who I believe made the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And, and just the story about the real life events that occurred after the filming of this, the actors who died in, like, in these tragic accidents is crazy. Yeah, Poltergeist. Holy crap. Amazing. Uh, Digibook of Seven, one of my favorite David Fincher films. This film is just so suspenseful. Kevin Spacey. So I'm going to say about Kevin Spacey. Because <laughs> you know, if you've seen it, you already know. Uh, Brad Pitt. Morgan Freeman. Just, God, the Seven Deadly Sins. Man, this freaking film, man. Look at this. Just the gruesome murder scene. Oh, my goodness. Just, yeah, this freaking film. What's in the box? Just so memorable. So rewatchable. Anyway, the last stack here. Moving on. We got 28 Days Later. Uh, Danny Boyle directed this one, the first one. That custom J card with the infected ape. Pretty cool. Really, ugh, I like that one so much. Especially the beginning. Oh my god, it stays with me. Just London being completely vacant and empty in uh, this one, right? Oh God. And then 28 Weeks Later, which was a great sequel. I wish they could make 28 months later already. Like, but they keep waiting. They're going to have to make 28 years later. I mean, shit. But this is a great sequel. Um, another movie franchise here that's so popular. Evil Dead with that beautiful retro steel book. Amazing. Directed by Sam Raimi. Evil Dead. Uh, there's nothing in there. But yeah, Ash is the man. Ash didn't become the man, though, until Evil Dead 2. Then he became the man. <laughs> I still don't have Army of Darkness. I'm dying to get Army of Dar Darkness um, in the Scream Factory Edition, but it's so expensive. It's always $30. I'm not paying $30 for a Blu-ray. I just can't do it. Can't do it. <laughs> Maybe it goes down to $20. I'll, I'll definitely get it. Evil Dead 2, which is... I think this is my favorite Evil Dead. Evil Dead 2. Groovy. <laughs> and then the remake, Evil Dead remake, was... Holy crap. Bloody and just... Just over the top. Just They just go for it. Um, what's his name? Fetty Alvarez, who directed Don't Breathe, made this one. His first film. Really good uh, remake. Then we got, of course, the classic. My favorite um, horror character and killer is Michael Myers in Halloween got the 35th anniversary edition oh, man well you can't what can you, you can't talk horror movies without talking about Halloween seriously who does not love this film Halloween simple premise that John Carpenter executed perfectly and that's why he's a legend and he's well known for Halloween if you look at it you watch his interviews he's like I just had a simple story simple job to take where I take a group of babysitters and pit them against a killer on Halloween night. That was it. But what he did with that simple story was he created his own style, his own unique take. And then the story about getting two masks. You got a Halloween uh, clown mask, and then you got the William Shatner Star Trek mask, which he cut and made it look like this. And it was so terrifying that you can portray anything you want on that blank blank face. That's what I love about Michael Myers. Oh my God. And of course, Halloween 2. Uh, worthy sequel. I can't wait. They're um, doing Halloween again. And Jamie Lee Curtis is coming back. So I'm, I'm so excited for that. But yeah, those are the only Halloween movies I own. This one won all the Academy Awards. And this is The Science of the Lambs. One of the greatest uh, villains. Uh, Hannibal Lecter. Anthony Hopkins just killed it in this one. I also like Red Dragon, but I own that one on uh, DVD. But yeah, hello, Clarice. <laughs> Quit pro quo, Clarice. Yeah. Great Stephen King adaptation right here. Misery by the great Kathy Bates. Holy crap, this movie's just so messed up. 
James Caan and Kathy Bates give Oscar-worthy performances. That's why she won the Oscar. I mean, Stephen King was just so pleased that the way she executed her character from the book, from his book, my God, this is just oof, cautionary tale of not trusting fans, like hardcore fans. This is the movie right here. And then that clobbering scene of the foot. Oh, just cringe every time. All right. Another Stephen King adaptation that is great, The Mist. It's the two-disc uh, collector's edition. They have a black and white version with this. Uh, directed by Frank Darabont, great director. May Shawshank, at Green Mile. And he also started The Walking Dead. So don't forget, people. And, uh, yeah, uh, I want to say it's a masterpiece. Like it says, masterpiece. But great movie. The ending. Whew, wow. The ending shocked the hell out of me. One of the most shocking endings you'll ever see. You won't see it coming. When you see it coming, when you see it for the first time, you're just so taken back. The Like just the, the balls on the director for doing that. I don't know if that was part of the original story, but holy crap. Amazing. Um, this out-of-print Blu-ray, Near Dark, one of the most underrated, oversought, like, overlooked films. This is like a vampire western. Very unique film directed by Catherine Bigelow, who's famous for directing the most recent film, Detroit, The Hurt Locker, Zero Dark Dirty. She's into all these political films, but before, she directed great films like Near Dark and Point Break, so... Happy to have that one. That goes for like twenty dollars, and I got it for like ten, so you can't beat that. Uh, now we got <laughs> leaving this for last. Uh, we got the Resident Evil franchise here, and I got Resident Evil One, which is my favorite one. This is the first one. Then you got Apocalypse with Nemesis. Then you got Resident Evil Extinction. This one starts going off the rails a little bit, but it's still watchable. Then Resident Evil Afterlife, and then I won't even bother with Retribution. There's no retribution for watching that piece of crap. And then the most recent one, the final chapter, I didn't even fucking bother, but that's it. Yeah, the steel bug. And... All right, that's all my entire horror movie collection. Holy crap, I'm say 40 minutes. Try my best, guys, but I get real depth with my films, but I enjoy talking films. Uh, post your comments, let me know what you guys thought about these titles I have. Have you seen any of these horror movies? What's your favorite horror film? Uh, what's your top five favorite horror film? Uh, what's your favorite horror movie character? Uh, yeah, post your comments. Let me know, and thanks for watching as always.